there's one thing you can say about humans is that they love honing and perfecting their skills. Whether we're talking about cavemen who are perfecting their skills to protect their families and to hunt dinosaurs or whatever they were doing, whether it was the Renaissance men who were putting up great architecture and then making paintings and whatever else they did, or if we're looking at some of the great athletes and really working on their craft and developing skills to make them the best athletes they can possibly be. And so I was inspired to learn the most important skills that humans living in the world today could know. And so what better place to turn to than WikiHow? So get out your notepads and get ready to learn. So here we go. All right, so the first most important skill that any human should know how to do is to how to fold a shirt. So in front of me, I have this beautiful shirt. It was from a Drake concert that I went to. And the way I used to fold shirts is like this, just like so, put it down, fold these in, bada bing, bada boom. And this is how they currently sit in my drawer. I don't know how you guys fold it, but apparently I'm doing it the wrong way. And so the correct way to do it is as follows. All right, so we're gonna start off by laying the shirt face down on a flat surface like so. Next up, we wanna smooth the fabric out to remove any wrinkles. So let's ensure that this puppy is as smooth as my bosom, beautiful. Okay, now here it gets tricky. So we're going to fold the shirt sideways into thirds to bring the sleeves in. All right, so this is some new technology to me. So it looks like we wanna go one half here and then maybe one half here. Here. So now it looks like it's in thirds. I wonder if this is how like you're trained at retail jobs to fold shirts. Let me know if you guys work at like Abercrombie or something. All right, and then it says to just fold the shirt in half from the bottom up. Oh, and then repeat folding one more time. Oh, you know what? That's kind of interesting. So this shirt is now folded kind of like this. I mean, it's kind of ugly. Like if you look at the front of it where you could see the collar and everything, it doesn't really look as good as it could look for a shirt. So I feel like this wasn't the most useful WikiHow article. All right, so that was kind of garbage, but now we're going to learn the Japanese quick fold, which is apparently a lot cooler. And so I'm really excited about this. So you're gonna lay your shirt out like such, and you're going to put it so that the collar is on your left. And then you're going to pinch the left shoulder at the midpoint, and then go down the shirt about midway. And then you're gonna pinch just the middle of the shirt here. After doing this, what I wanna do is put my left hand over my right hand, and then I wanna grab the bottom of the shirt. So it's gonna feel a little bit weird. And then let's see if this magic works. I'm going to do that. Okay, and there should be one sleeve down, that's fine. And then we're just gonna fold that sleeve in. And what I'm left with, you know what? I mean, it's not terrible. This is what it did. All right, I'm done. I'm just gonna fold shirts exactly I've been doing it for the past 25 years. So how about that, WikiHow? All right, next up, perhaps more important than folding a shirt is tying a tie. All right, so this tie is a pretty normal tie. It's not too thick, it's not too thin. You don't wanna have the skinniest of ties. You also don't wanna have the bulkiest of ties. Maybe somewhere in the middle, because you want to blend professionalism with style, which is very important to appear as if you are competent. And the method that we will be employing today is going to be called the Tupac method. Shout out to Tupac. I think his killer was just caught. So we're going to start by draping the tie around your neck and you're going to do this and you're going to basically want the long side to be the fat side. So do it somewhat like this because at the end you're going to see what we're going to do is do some adjustments. So set it up exactly like so. After this, they're telling me to cross the wide end over the narrow end. All right, just like that, it's a nice simple cross. Now we're going to loop the wide end under the narrow end. So now that you've crossed it, now you're gonna just basically take that and you're going to loop it so now it's out front again. This whole time you wanna make sure that you're still holding it and then you're gonna loop it once more. Just do that bad boy again, cause this is gonna be a nice fat tie. And then at this point you have enough tie where you're able to come up towards the top. Then you're gonna pull that bad boy right up there like a little puppy. There's gonna be this knot here, so you're gonna Put this through, like so. Look, it's like magic. Now all of a sudden, you have your tie. And there's a knot, which you probably can't see right now because the mic is directly touching the tie. Uh, but there is a knot, okay? And I didn't adjust it well, but you know, I feel like they can't notice. All right, so now that we just learned one of the most important professional skills that a human could know, which is tying a tie, we'll be moving on to another very popular WikiHow article to learn the skill of how to say happy birthday in Spanish. I don't know why so many people want to know this. I guess because it's a pretty popular language. I happen to know the answer to this. The answer to this is feliz cumpleaños. Hablo español, parlo italiano, arigato gozaimas. I'm a man of many languages, a polyglot if you may, multilingual, bilingual, trilingual, quadlingual, any lingual I have. 
all right? Including happy birthday in Spanish, just to ensure that I haven't been singing the Feliz Cumpleaños a ti song incorrectly, Feliz Cumpleaños. And if you really want to sound it out, it's Feliz Cumpleaños, Feliz Cumpleaños, okay? So next time you have one of your Spanish buddies, he comes up to you, he's like, yo, dude, it's my birthday this weekend. What are we doing? You say, I don't know, but Feliz Cumpleaños. Happy birthday. You're welcome. Another important skill that apparently many people are researching is how to burp on demand. I happen to know how to do this. Here's a little spoiler. Uh. But if you really want to learn how to do it, this is what we're going to do. So we're going to swallow some air first, all right? According to WikiHow. So get a lot of air. Don't, don't drown, but just keep swallowing. Oh, until your lungs are filled with air. So swallow, don't say anything. Just do a little gulp. You could also, of course, drink a carbonated beverage to build up gas in your stomach. And then after you swallow, just let it out. And if you don't know like what the burp motion is, it's basically like you're breathing, but it's from the back of the throat. So just swallow air. So then you have your lungs filled with air and the air has to go somewhere. I'm talking, so it's being released now. But if you're not talking, you're just watching this on your phone or something, just swallow air and then and you'll be pleasantly surprised. Burping, despite people thinking it's disgusting, is actually a very natural thing according to science. And am I a scientist? No. But am I a chemist? No. But I am a biologist, and one big thing about biology is that cells constantly replace themselves in a process called osmosis. And according to osmosis, the laws of physics suggest to us that during this process, there is a large amount of carbon dioxide being oxidized with molecules. Bet you didn't learn that in science. Next up, one of the fifth most popular WikiHow articles is how to calculate pi by throwing frozen hot dogs. Now, there's a couple weird things about this. One, that, but two, I actually had frozen hot dogs because if you guys aren't aware, I'm a really big fan of wieners. I love wieners. I love the small wieners. I love big wieners. All wieners are okay with me. And I had some of these skinless beef wieners because I'm a big fan of pigs in the blanket. Pigs in the blanket are probably my favorite appetizer. All right, so first off is a select a food item to throw. So apparently you don't even really need sabret. Okay, whatever. Now we have to select the spot from which to throw your mathematical cuisine. So you need about six to 10 feet in front of you. If you guys watched the last video, you know that my number one enemy is this pillow board that doesn't fit in my bedroom. And so what I'm using at right now is to basically provide a soundboard so then my voice sounds a bit better. Because as I get further away, you'll notice that there's some echo because I'm in a big empty room because I have no interior design skills. But anyways, we will be attacking this with presumably this skinless beef frank. All right, so they want me to measure the length of your projectile. Okay, I'd say each one is about one inch. Lay down masking tape in parallel strips across your floor. The good thing about this is that I don't need to do this because there's lines that run parallel across my floor. All right, so now we want to get into a position and throw your food. Okay, so here we go. 3.141593. I don't know how this became a popular article, but next up is how to bite your lips seductively. Get ready to get rizzed, I guess. Here we go. The first thing you want to do is make eye contact. And it says, don't stare, you just want to pair. That's actually a really good one-liner. And then next up, start a lip pout and bite soon after you make eye contact, so. Okay, and then after that, lower your eyelashes seductively and then do a triangle gaze. All right, so now we really got to get into this. So let's say, you know, I see you, we're out to eat, and I'm just like, ooh, like, look at that person over there. And so we, what do you want to do? We're going to combine this all together. And that's it, that's the seductive uh, stare. You do that and you're guaranteed to get unlimited partners, mates, biological reproductive entities, okay? Like that is the key to rizzing up as these new age people say. All right, next up is how to crack your upper back. Now, I must say, I hate cracking my back. I think it is terrible to crack. I know all you're doing when you crack stuff is releasing air from the sockets of the joints, but I don't feel like a human when I'm cracking. It feels like I'm just subhuman, just, oh, like, you know, you ever see those videos where it's like, like you're cracking your back and it's like the craziest thing? That's how I feel. So I'm really not a big fan of this, but because at the end of the day, I decided to make this video and I really want to provide for myself these skills to survive as a human being, I will do it. So first off is if you want to crack your own back, you have to use a 
chair. Now what I'm going to do, because again, I'm a man of commitment to this, I have a folding chair, which they think is the optimal chair to do this. So one second. All right, I have returned with the folding chair. And here we go. Folding chair has been set up and it says, place your palms on your forehead, okay? And exhale slowly. All right, so palms on my forehead and exhale slowly. And then you wanna keep going back. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm releasing 10 years of just stress. Oh my God. Oh, oh, that felt so good, but I didn't crack anything. One thing I do like is stretching. A good old stretch really gets me going. Oh, how do I crack? I don't know, my body's just unable to crack. Look at tired. Oh my God, I'm really tired. What the heck's going on? Oh, did I just employ like some like military sleep method? Like how am I so sleepy now? All I did was sit in a folding chair and lean back. New sleep solution. If you need to sleep, do exactly what I just did because I might have to part two this recording, jeez. Next up is how to tie your shoes. And with me, I brought these custom Nintendo shoes. I have two of them, right? So you see the Luigi and Mario, and they have all these different aspects to them. So these are actually made by my sister. My sister has a business called Brushed by Soap, in which she does a lot of like customized apparel and shoes, and she's releasing her own paint. So she's very artistic, unlike your boy. But she made for me a pair of these Mario shoes. It was around the time of the Mario movie. They're absolutely sick. See like a little bill, bullet bill on the side, just tons of great accenting on this. And so we're going to use Use these shoes to understand how to tie your shoes. So this is how you tie a basic knot. So place the shoes on a flat surface like so. All right, so to tie a basic knot, take both laces and thread one lace over the other, okay? And then loop it and then pull it tight. So just like that. Afterwards, we're going to make a loop with one of the laces. All right, so a nice little loop, like a bunny ear, as they call it. And then they're gonna say to tie around this, around your fingers, and then pull it through. Bob might be the cleanest shoe tie. Just like, look, that might be the cleanest thing I've ever done in my life. That is so clean that I actually wanna wear these because I want to just take in the beauty that I just provided to these laces. Oh, oh, that's nice. That is a really well-tied shoe. I'm gonna do this again. All right, one more time. If you guys are like four years old watching this, cross, through, pull, loop, bam, pull around, bam, bam. And just like that, you have a tied shoe. Now, you really should be tying the shoe when the shoe is on but it is what it is. Another one of the most requested skills on WikiHow is how to buy nothing. I don't know what that really means, but I have a workaround for this because this is a little Easter egg for another video that I have coming up. There's actually a product called Nothing that you can buy on Amazon. And so I'm going to right now buy nothing because WikiHow is telling me that that's what I should be doing. Sorry for all the nip slips, by the way. I know it happens quite a lot, but. All right, so here it is. So on Amazon, you can literally purchase just something called nothing, which because I'm a YouTuber, I guess I'm going to waste money on buying nothing for the sake of fulfilling my goal of doing all of the tasks outlined in this video. So here's nothing created by a brand called Close Up. I'm surprised so many people bought this. 246 ratings, geez. All right, free delivery. It looks like it's coming November 27th. Do, do we have like another website? How is this coming a month from now? All right, I actually found it on a site called Timu, which I don't know if this is legit or not, but I'm just gonna buy it and I will report back in maybe a month if it comes because it says it's going to come within two weeks. So let's add this to cart and check out and buy nothing. For some reason, it's almost sold out, which is crazy to me. And there's, it's only 96 cents. What is going on here? Is this a safe website? Right, I feel like I might bite the bullet on that. I learned how to buy nothing. I think I'm pretty aware at this point how to do it. All right, moving back to here and we have how to clap your hands. It's true, babies do it. So clapping your hands is a very important part about being human. Some people don't know how to do it. Interesting little thing here, if you're ever dapping up a girl, you'll realize that they don't really know how to clap their hands. Cause when guys dap up, you know what I'm talking about? It's just like clean. And then you'll dap up a girl who's like not in that bro -y sort of circle. And then it's like, it's weak, it's weak. And so I'm going to teach everybody now how to clap your hands because if you can clap properly, you can dap properly. And dapping is like the crossover into another person's world. Like the moment you connect on a nice dap, you know what I'm talking about. Bam, all of a sudden you're best friends. And I feel as if there's a rift between the gender. And in order to compromise, what we need to do is we all need to get better at clapping. So then everybody can greet everybody with a nice dap. So listen up. So there's different clapping techniques that you can do. So you can do the basic clap, which is just 
and that's gonna be your four fingers on top, and then you're just gonna hit your palm. Right, very classic, we've all been here, fine. I happen to be a clapping expert, a dapping expert, you can ask anybody if you see me. Next time you see me in person, people come up, dap me up, and you'll be like, whoa, that was one of the better dap ups that I've ever had in my life. I think it will change your life, all right? None of these like handshakes, you shouldn't be hugging people, it should just be, you know what I'm talking about? All right, but so the actual way to do it is do this, right? Like basically clasp your hands together like so, and then just, put it right back in that position. But you wanna have like a little bit of curvature to each hand. So it's gonna be like, like that. Oh, it's like spanking a baby's bottom. I love that, look at that. All right, this one feels a little targeted, but it's how to walk correctly and fix your form. All right, so the proper walking method is to keep your back straight and your head held high. So usually people don't have good posture. All right, that should be its own article. Maybe it is, but when you, when you, look, you wanna have those shoulder blades back. You wanna be standing like so. You don't wanna be like this, like a little shrimp in the desk chair. You know that meme? You don't wanna be like this, cause you don't wanna be walking like McGregor going into the ring. You wanna be somewhere in the middle, which is just like a straight line. And so when you walk, you want your head held high and then you wanna implement step, good, step, good. And it's just that basic, all right? So let's do this together now. The more you know. Okay, so I don't know again why so many people are interested in how to be random. That feels like a very 2023 article. People like to be like, ooh, I'm quirky, ooh. But let's see what they say. All right, so in order to be random, you have to use non sequiturs. And what that means, it's Latin for does not follow. You shouldn't be constructing an argument in a logical manner. So let's argue for a second. You're saying, Sam, you're not a good YouTuber. This would be my response if I was being random. Well, Pegasus Roman Empire, have you considered bacon isn't necessarily the job that you should be unfortunately sleeping underneath the bridge. And that right there is being random. All right, so this is one that I've wanted to learn for a very long time, and it's called how to whistle with two fingers. You ever see those guys, coaches, gym teachers, you know, like, how do they do it? Here we go. So you want to position your lips and fingers. So tuck your lips between your teeth, okay? Form a U shape with two of your fingers, okay? Doesn't matter which two fingers. You could also touch the fingers, so either a U or touch. And so to actually produce the whistling sound, move your tongue down and back in your mouth, so. <sighs> Inhale deeply to collect air, so. <sighs> I've never known how to whistle, so. <laughs> Wait, am I doing it? <laughs> and we are moving on to how to make a paper airplane. Every kid and their mom is wondering how to do this. Well, here we go. So first you wanna start with a perfectly blank piece of paper like this. And then you're going to put it down on your table and you are going to fold it in half first. So take the paper and we're just going to fold it in half like so. Next up is to bring the top corners towards the center crease. So then you're gonna open it back up and then you're going to create something like this where you fold it down like a little triangle because that's gonna provide the point. You're gonna see this coming into form pretty soon. After you do this, you're going to fold the angle top edges towards the crease again. Oh, I see. So then take your triangle, do another triangle. So now you're making kind of like an isosceles triangle. Wow, this is like a fighter jet. Here you go, just like that. And then you're gonna fold it along the center line. So then just like that, you're just going to fold it in the center to create that little jet. Get that nice and sturdy. And then you're gonna create the wings by folding it back. Boy, is this going to be a beauty. So then put it all together and you got yourself, this is like a fighter jet. If I made the correct plane, I should be able to perfectly send this into the webcam and it's gonna like go into a really cool transition into the next skill. So here we go. What's up guys, we're back because that definitely works. And we're going to learn how to win a street fight. So a lot of guys don't know how to properly fight, all right? They don't know how to, you know, like a little, they don't know to turn their hips when they're punching to generate power, use their legs. You can't see me, but I'm holding guard, you know? They don't understand these things. And honestly, neither do I. And that's why I'm going to learn this right now so then we can all be better people. All right, so first off, you're gonna stand with your feet apart. So you wanna stand with your feet apart and knees slightly bent. So basically just like this. 
okay? After that, keep one hand up to protect your face. If somebody comes in at you, bam, you see I have my guard up. What are you gonna punch, my forearms? They're made of bone. You can't get in if I'm doing this, you know? All right, so you wanna stand an arm's length away from your attacker, so obviously you wanna control the space, and then when they come in, let them throw the first punch. Maybe don't do that. This is not self-defense advice. But if they do throw the first punch, then what you're gonna do is you basically wanna kinda of like just, just block, you're out of the distance. So if it's an amateur throwing a punch at you, just be like, you missed me, you know? And you're already loaded, look at this. I'm playing, I'm toying. Let's say you're, you're talking to him. You're like, bro, come on, let's go. Back, all right, so here we go, just like so. Little However, something this article doesn't say is that you should never even get to the point of a fight because if you fight, if you're really a weird person because you shouldn't be fighting. If you're fighting, it's probably gotten to a point where it needs to get there. But whenever there's escalation, just remind yourself that it's always better running away. You know, you're oh, I'm a coward. You're not a coward. The best thing you can possibly do for yourself is live as long as possible, right? That's the goal of life. And so if you're in like a 50-50 situation, even a 70-30, you're like, oh, I could probably win this. Just get out of there. It doesn't matter, like, who cares? You you just leave, you go home, you play Madden, whatever you guys do, and then you're good. You watch more Sambucha videos, everybody's happy, nobody gets hurt. I think that's what you should do. All right, so another skill that a lot of people are looking up is how to win at tic-tac-toe. So if you're drawing first, you should always win, apparently. So let's go ahead and play a computer in tic-tac-toe. So first thing you wanna do is play your first X in a corner. So let's take this right corner. According to the flow chart, what I should be doing is providing for myself this. Because now, see, he's in a position where he's gonna lose because now I just drop one in the middle and he's bamboozled. Win. Let's try this against impossible. All right, so I go first. Corner, he went there. I go here, he goes there, I go here. All right, well, this is gonna be a stalemate, which is pretty unfortunate. Play me again, let's go. I go here, you go here. I go here, you go here. Okay, it's gonna be the same thing, let's restart. I go here. All right, this guy is clearly a seasoned vet. He can't go to the middle every time. All right, what about I go here? We just have to get him not going in the middle once so I could say I beat the expert. He's too seasoned, he just gets it. All right, so if there's two competent people playing tic-tac-toe, you can pretty much always expect this exact outcome. So yeah, if you ever wanna win, all you need to do is go first and make sure they don't go in the middle and then easy win. Otherwise, if you're playing second, you could always draw with the person if you go in the middle. All right, we are back up in action because we are going to learn something that honestly, I really don't even need to be standing up to do, but we are going to learn how to speak in a British accent. So we have a lot of Brits out there, okay? A lot of Brits watch the content. You know, there's a lot of things. So the first thing is to start with the R. So speakers don't roll their R's. So for instance, instead of hurry, they'll say hurry, hurry. Hurry, that's what they're telling me. Uh, they also pronounce the U as ew or ew. So the word stupid, they say stupid instead of stupid. And they say duty, duty instead of duty. Heavy consonants. So pronounce that T and duty as T and not D. So duty, duty. Hello, do you want to play Call of Duty today? Duty, duty, T, 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 duty. All right, next up is they drop the T sometimes. So if you're saying the word battle, they might pronounce it bow. Battle. So in Call of Duty, there's lots of battle. Pronunciation, so bin instead of ben. So, okay, we know that. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of different things you could do. Well, I'll tell you what, mate. So this is me doing my British accent just all for it. I think it's pretty okay. You doing all right? You doing all right, mate? I don't know if that's Australian or British, but it's the same thing. If it ain't American, it ain't jamming, am I right? Okay, next up we are going to do wide push-ups. A lot of people are interested in growing their chest. This has now become a fitness channel. You know what, I don't even need the wiki how because I value my fitness capabilities, and so I'm going to teach us all right now. So when doing a push-up, one of the most important things you can do for yourself uh, is learn the leverages that you have working on your side. All right, so you wanna keep everything straight. You don't wanna be like this. If you don't know how to do a push-up, then just go on your knees like this. And then you're just gonna look straight, chin up, right? So just kind of like keep everything centered like so. This is the, it's like a plank almost is the push-up position. You don't wanna be like retract forward. You don't wanna be retract back, just straight. Just be normal, just do this. And then you're just gonna drop and you're using your triceps and chest. Activate those and then push up. And if you wanna do a wide push-up, it's just, it's the same exact thing. So it's, you just go a little bit wider right outside of your shoulders. And this is gonna activate your shoulders more versus your chest because the push is coming from here versus here, the closer you get, 
you'll feel it in your chest. That's why if you do this, you'll feel the chest squeeze. But as you go out, you'll start to feel it here in your outer pec area and then your like delts and everything like that. And then this is like ultimately full shoulders. So the closer you go in, the more you're activating in here. And then as you expand out, you're going out here. So that's why this is the width of a wide press. And then that's it, nice and easy. All right, so it's no surprise that a lot of people are looking this up, but how to fart quietly. So I think a lot of people are just looking this up in class and they're like, oh my gosh, I have to fart, how do I do it? And this article pops up a lot because it's one of the most popular skills that people wanna learn. So the first thing you could do is really focus on minimizing the sound and the smell of your fart. So if you guys are farting, there's two bad things about it, the sound, and the smell. So anything you can do to obscure that is going to be a good thing. And so what they suggest is to cough loudly or make a loud noise to obscure the sound. And so in order to do that, it's like, <clears throat> and as I cleared my throat, I just farted. Like, you don't even know, right? It just happened. Pew. Sound covered. Great. Now, if you want to minimize the smell, what they suggest is to walk as you fart. Because if you're walking and you're passing by multiple people, multiple different places, it's really hard to pin it down on you. And so it's a much easier acceptance mentally to let go of a fart if you're in a public setting. Because it's like, huh, who do we blame? And then eventually within like 10 seconds, people forget that they smelled it in the first place and then it just becomes whatever. All right, so this one is more historical more than anything, but this is how to wrap a toga, like what the ancient Romans would wear. Now, obviously I don't own a toga, but I do have a bath towel that's pretty big and I think it could double as a toga. All right, so the first thing is to fold your sheet in half like so. Then you wanna drape one end over your shoulder, just like this, like you're about to go into the sauna with the boys. Well, I don't know if that's a thing, but you know, like you're about to just do your thing. You just fold it over and you say, hey, like, let's go, just like so. Then you're gonna pull the fabric from the backside around you, just like this. All right, and I think I actually ran out of fabric because you're supposed to pull this around, which I'm unable to do. And so what I'll say is that this is as good as I can get. So let's say I show up to a toga party and I'm wearing this. Would you look twice? You'd be like, oh, that's just like a really nice tight toga. He's just doing his thing, just completely toga up. So that's it. All right, so now is a very basic human function that I'm guessing the reason this is so popular is because a lot of people that have anxiety, they get panic attacks, they're looking up how to breathe. The most basic thing we can do, we're born knowing how to do it, yet some of us are unable to properly do it. And so what you wanna do is take deep breaths and avoid shallow chest breathing. So sometimes you'll notice you have shortness of breath and that's likely because you're not taking enough deep breaths. So every time you breathe in air, you should be filling the lungs. You have great lung capacity, unless you don't, if you have lung cancer, unfortunately, maybe you can't do this, but if you're able to, take nice deep breaths. Don't be afraid to breathe, you're a human. So, how to cry on the spot. So how do actors actually do this? So hold your eyes open as long, so I'm a big crier, all right? I cry at every single movie I watch. Every time I watch Modern Family, I cry. There's always like some touching thing. I cry all the time when I'm watching media, but I'm not a really big crier otherwise. Like I don't cry in my personal life that much. So this could be useful. It could be good to know because you can manipulate if you know how to cry. You could be an actor. I don't mean that by the way, in like a psychological like crazy person, I mean like, Acting. So hold your eyes open as long as you can. All right, let's actually do this to a T. Rub your eyes. Bite the inside of your lip. Okay, we don't have these fake tears, but you're apparently supposed to use some tear producing substance. You can cut onions. Think about things that'll make you cry. <laughs> it's just so sad. I got nothing. Imagine yourself being weak or helpless. Impossible. All right, I guess I'm not cut out for this. I'll just have to turn on Disney movies if I really want to start crying. All right, so back to the computer for this one. We're going to learn how to always win at Connect Four, the strategy to keep you on top, which is useful because I have no idea how to win Connect Four. All right, so since I'm playing first, I should always put it in the center column, apparently. And then I want to always block my opponent as my next move. And you really want to focus, it says, on controlling the center column. So whatever I can do to sort of maximize that for me. Uh, so yeah, let's stack one here. He's going to probably go on top. He didn't, which is an interesting move. So let's go there. Okay, he did choose to block me. Now I'm going to go there. He went there. So now I'm going to go here. All right, that's a pretty solid move by him. That actually kind of hurt me a little bit. All right, so now I need one more here. So let's build it up now. Let's go, baby. Oh, he's done. Oh, I'm done. I lost. 
What did I do wrong? I guess it's all dependent on their moves. How did I lose to a computer in a children's game? All right, so next up is how to dance at a rave. So a lot of people, I guess, don't know how to dance and they get a little nervous when they're at like a party or something. So we're gonna learn how to dance and we'll put on a little non-copyright music in the background. So you wanna feel the music and dance with the beat. Feel that music. I don't got music on by the way. So if my editor puts on music that doesn't line up with me, you know why. So just like feel it, you know, maybe get a little like toe tap to get into it a little bit, sort of like jive with it. And then you're gonna wanna move your entire body when you dance. You see what I'm moving? I'm moving everything. I'm doing like a little A. Like, so I'm moving every part of me. Look what's not moving. What's not moving? My hips are moving. I'm kind of salsa in right now, you see? Doing a little bit of everything. A little head movement too. Look at that. That's not bad. I'm dancing now. I don't know what the song's on, but I'm dancing. See, a little bit of A. And if you dance with a partner, that's when you can start doing some crazy thing. Just move. Dancing's just moving. Think about it. Stay in your own space unless you want someone to dance with you. All right, so, and that's it. It's literally just moving and feeling to the rhythm. So whatever song's on, just like dance with it. And you know, you can pump it up. You can do a little like, hey, like spin spin around a little bit. You know, then there's like all those like white people dances, like, oh, like shopping cart, wherever that is, like, oh. Don't do those things, please. But that's it, that's dancing 101. Dancing in a nutshell is just, doing your thing. All right, next up we have how to scare people. So you could plan a quick job. I think we mastered that. Let me know if that got you. So you could find a good hiding place, add some creepy props, and wait until people are alone. So it would be a pristine time for a ghost to pop out of that closet, for instance. Because if a ghost were to do that, or the vent right there, anywhere, because I, I don't expect it, and I'm alone, and uh, yeah, so. That's it. All right, now we're gonna learn how to hypnotize somebody. So this is something you shouldn't do lightly. You have to find somebody first who wants to be hypnotized. So let's assume you guys wanna be hypnotized. Choose a quiet, comfortable room like this one. Let them know what to expect from hy hypnosis. So what's gonna happen is you're going to basically daydream in the same way that you probably typically daydream. It's just gonna be controlled by me. All right, so I'm about to hypnotize you. Let's put something on screen like some hypnotic thing. All right, so right now you are listening to me. Listen to every word I say carefully, take it in, and try to understand the words I'm telling you. You are not you. You are an entity that is controlled by God. And what's going to happen to you over the next 20 seconds, bam, already 20 seconds passed. See, you were in a daze, you didn't even realize it. I had you listening, and that in and of itself, hypnotism is just me grabbing your attention. So technically, if you're watching this video, you've been hypnotized from the very first second you clicked into this. Now we have how to write an essay. Read your assignment carefully. Check for formatting and style requirements. Narrow down your topic. Okay, you wanna know a better way to do it? Write me an essay. Done. You could even say, write me an essay on the history of YouTube. Wow, that's actually incredible. Okay, they missed a very important date, which is November 2023, which is when Sambucha released this video, because this is historical. I actually don't recommend doing this. If you have to write an essay, actually follow the prompt of WikiHow. This is me just trying to be clever. All right, down to the last couple of things that we are going to learn in order to be the perfect human. And I don't know why people are looking this up, but acting like an anime or manga character. So first, we're going to decide on a basic personality. All right, let's say I want to be like a quirky, like high school protagonist. Exaggerate your emotions. What? No way. Oh my gosh. Okay. Was that good? Include some habits or gestures. So as I do that, I'm going to be like, what? No way. Oh my gosh. So that's my thing. The surrender, the Cobra. And then you have a trademark quote. Mine's going to be, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube. Oh, wow. I feel like the NPC people in the, on the TikTok live streams. I'm not doing that again. I'm sorry you had to witness that. Next up is how to be cool, which is great because after that, I really need to learn this one. How to be cool. So don't be needy. All right. You'll always hear YouTubers subscribe to my channel. Oh, if you want a cookie, subscribe to my channel. What? Subscribe to my channel if you genuinely want to. You know how cool I am? I don't care if you subscribe or not. You could, you also couldn't. Doesn't matter to me. Doesn't affect a single thing in my life. That's how chill I am. Subscribe or don't, doesn't matter. So that's the first thing. Next up, be yourself. I'm myself. Practice self-disclosure. Okay. Be friendly, but not excessively eager. I'm not, the, I'm not eager. I'm friendly though, let's chat. What do you want to know? See how chill I am? Doesn't it just exude like a sense of chillness? Be a good conversationalist. Talk to me. And of course, this video wouldn't be complete without the number one thing that people are looking up, which I think really speaks to the state of the human psyche and what people want to do, and that is, 
how to be funny. So being funny is a very difficult thing to do. I don't consider myself a funny person by any stretch. I don't try to be a funny person. I think it's something that's natural. I don't know if you can necessarily learn how to be funny, but you have to have a good sense of humor. So you have to understand what makes you laugh, right? The more introspection you do and understand where it's coming from, you could come from a place of being a bit more funny. Learn to laugh in boring or unfunny circumstances. You wanna be that guy that is a good time to be around no matter where you are. So you don't wanna be a person that's like, oh, that's so cringe. Oh, that's so cringe. Cause if you say that, you're automatically not funny and you're instead just like a judger and nobody really likes to be around a judger. I learn to appreciate witty wordplay and puns. So something you could do here is hang around with dads, get those dad jokes, start to process them, be like, you know what? That's pretty good. Because at the end of the day, a dad joke is just like a very mature joke. It's just, it, it was in the oven a bit, it baked, but it's still a good joke. All right, so you wanna also take yourself less seriously and know your audience and you wanna strike when the iron is hot. So it doesn't mean pile onto somebody. It just means when you see your openings, you gotta take them. You know, let's say you're out on Halloween, somebody's wearing like a crazy costume. It's like, oh, like let's strike. I'm a funny person, so I gotta, let's have some fun. Funny means you're a fun knee person. So it's like you're a you're fun at your core. It's like, oh, let's have fun. Hey, who wants to have fun? That's fun. That's fun. This is all fun me. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more content, make sure to click here or click here. Otherwise, subscribe on your way out, and I'll see you next time. Peace.